Hi Arvind, welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for agreeing to be a part of this episode. So for those of you who don't know, Arvind is my friend and we have been friends for over six years now. We did a course together back in India, which was Form D. And then Arvind moved to UK and I followed after. And so here we are and he's going to share his experience as an international student in UK. And also he can share some tips and tricks, how he managed to get uh, uh, some amazing grades and also how he got a job here. So let's get started. Uh, so thank you, Raki, for inviting me to your channel. And it's a pleasure to uh, share some of the information about coming to the UK and my experience of in the UK in your channel. Thank you. Thank you, Arvind. So my first question is, uh, could you share your academic journey with our viewers so that they can get a bit of an idea of uh, how how the things progressed for you? Uh, sure, I would be glad to share that. Uh, so since my schooling uh, finished, uh, the two choices I had was either pharmacy or maybe dentistry. Uh, but pharmacy was the uh, favorite choice. And among pharmacy, I felt that PharmD was a completely new course and I always wanted to try something new and not the tried and tested courses. So that's when I decided to go for PharmD. It was a five years plus one year internship course and the internship part where we interact with the patients and um, like we prescribe and also modify the medication regimens. That was something that attracted me to the course. Yeah. So I joined PharmD and the initial like, first two years were a bit difficult to get to grips with uh, the syllabus and what we would do after PharmD because that was a question that frequently came up from everyone, like what the scope of the course was and so on. And eventually, um, like after the third year and after we started interacting with patients, this became more clear as to what we would do. Like we could go on interacting with patients, counsel them regarding the medications, modify the therapy and so on. Yes. So that is something that was uh, really interesting and different from the other courses because it was like, like the MBBS, it was like direct interaction with the patients, which yeah, is yeah. completely different for a pharmacy course. Yes. So that is something uh, that really excited me. And following PharmD, I, my main aim ever since I was a child was to study in the UK. I like shortlisted many courses which I could potentially apply. And then eventually I got admission for precision medicine and special with specialisms at University of Glasgow. Oh, that's amazing. So you already had a dream and you had decided very early on in your uh studies itself that you wanted to move to UK. So uh, can you share some, um, some uh, details on how did you get the admission? As in, is there a merit criteria to get admission in the University of Glasgow? Because uh, from my research, I found that University of Glasgow uh, rates as the top 11 college according to Guardian 2022. So what was your uh, requirements and the criteria of getting this admission? So like I said, uh, during my internship in PharmD, I had initially made a sh short list of courses. Like, you know, many of our friends also were yes. interested in studying abroad and was starting to make a list of courses. And from that, I got many ideas how to shortlist the courses and so on. So one of the websites that I found for like searching courses was Masters Portal, which was uh, really good in mm -hmm. filtering out the courses and the fields and the years of study and so on. And using that website, I made a short list of about uh, 20 courses, which I could potentially apply. And then I had gone, gone over to the consultancy and my consultancy was IDP, made a list of these courses and then went to IDP to ask them which all of these potential courses which I could apply for. Yeah. So what I would recommend is that we make a list of the courses ourselves rather than the consultancy suggesting the courses to us yes. because they would not be aware of our interests and the scope of these courses and 
So it's much better that we search the courses and then go over to the consultancy to check with them whether we can apply for these courses. Yes. So some of these courses were ineligible. So mm. and some of these, like when I got the syllabus, was not too much interested in. So I yeah. cut these down to like four or five and applied for all these. And I got the offer from from University of Glasgow for two courses. One was uh, precision medicine. Mm-hmm. and the other was antimicrobial resistance and epidemiology uh-huh. more interested in precision medicine and yes. eventually decided to go forward with that course so like you asked is there a merit criteria and so on uh, mm-hmm. there is a mark cut off like 75 oh, okay. or 70 to 75% marks and also the uh, english language uh, so some of the universities in the uk also exempt us from writing the IELTS plan the course that you are applying for early on because uh, there's a high chance that you can get a scholarship for these courses oh yeah also you have to prepare a really good CV and SOP uh, mm-hmm. which has to be uh, tailored according to the uh, course yes and while the CV can be a base the SOP like uh, takes the application to the finish, finish finishing line yes so that's are really important and this SOP has to be really tailored yeah. so you can start off introduction about yourself which should be really brief yeah. and what course you studied why you are applying for the course in the UK what made you interested in the course then why you are interested in studying in the UK and it would also be really good to research small points about the course like some of the modules some of the works done by the researchers and you oh, can wow. add those yeah. points to the SOP so that uh, they can understand that you did your thorough research into the course yeah and then you can end it by telling about the university and also the history of the university and the cv also should not be like it should be more of a student cv oh, that's wonderful that's wonderful i love the way you emphasize the fact that you need to actually do your own research and you research and you should not actually rely on these uh, career consultancies because they don't know our background on what we what would interest us and also and curating your cv which should be an academic cv like you mentioned and also writing your own sop elaborating on your uh, interest and passion so that they truly feel that you are really interested in studying the course thank you so much arvin and also for our viewers if you are interested in um, seeing any of our um, sops and you want a format please comment in the um, comment section below we can share it with you and also maybe make another video for you all congratulations arvin on getting a distinction in the university of glasgow so what was the whole process and uh, how did you manage it like was there any lot of uh, planning and organization that was required to get some amazing grades such as this so can you share the whole process with our viewers yeah sure uh, so initially when i uh, joined the course the first four months was uh, done back at home uh, so that helped quite a bit uh, in starting off the course really well uh, since you did not have to uh, look into anything else uh, and when i arrived in uh, march 2021 it was a bit difficult at the start because it was a uh, lockdown and you had some catching up to do and there were like tutorials where you could watch the recordings which was really useful mm-hmm. because you did not need to attend the live sessions and you can attend uh, like watch back the records mm-hmm. and so that helped quite a lot at the beginning and then uh, like for every assignment you have to like plan of how you will approach the assignment yes. like if it's an essay you need to first make a list of the articles that you intend to read yes. and then have an idea of what you are going to write and like it's like making a story and like what you are going to in what you are intending to tell in the essay and how do you start off how do you introduce the topic and how do you discuss so you need to plan everything like starting off from selection of articles right to the uh, conclusion of the essay yeah so that that's what even i have understood because um, our professors also used to say just focus on the quality and not on the quantity so even if it is like a 3000 word assignment if you write like 700 words if that 700 words is of like good quality 
you don't have to write much so yeah that's yeah. what you were also emphasizing on thank you for that arvin so how is your job going on uh, so i see that you have landed on your first full time job in uk and which is your first job right so yeah. how did you how did you get the job and what was the whole process like uh, so getting a job was one of the most uh, challenging parts even before the uh, course had ended i had like started making cvs Mm-hmm. and the cover letter and a basic cover letter that could be modified according to each job and after then i started applying target like how many applications you can make each day not a good idea to apply using the same cv and cover letter to all the positions that you apply uh, tailored to that specific job and uh, this is something that i got to understand a few months into applying uh, for the jobs have to start applying for the jobs uh, much before your uh, course ends and mm-hmm. this is a mistake that i did so mm-hmm. you can get used to that well in advance and can be more prepared by the time you finish the course for some of the jobs it can you it usually starts off with the hr call yeah and then followed by assessments and mm-hmm. followed by one or two interviews yeah and for the current job i i have uh, it like included i think three stages which start okay. out with the hr call mm-hmm. and the assessment and then the final interview and so you can apply for jobs through linkedin uh, then jobs.acuk and indeed yeah uh, and uh, you can also another way is by emailing the hr of yeah. companies would also be a good idea thank you arvind i think you have covered the entire to- entire topic with lots of examples and you have given us which website to be uh, looking into as well as how to curate our cvs and cover letters which is something that is really important nobody likes cv sprayers like you put the same cv everywhere but you have covered that topic also thank you so much so is there any advice that you would give to our uh, um, uh, viewers who are willing to move to uk for their uh, um, higher studies you have to be uh, uh, ready to make a lot of uh, hard work while coming to the uk yeah uh, in studies and working and so on yes and it should not be completely about like studies or uh, working and you have to enjoy sometimes go traveling yeah. and exploring the places because that is one of the main things that we look forward to when we are back home but when we actually arrive here we yeah. are reluctant to do that so traveling and exploring places and then just refresh your minds and then uh, go again and this would help a lot in uh, in between like difficult assignments and job applications because if you are completely focused on that it would be really difficult to focus and it would be like one dimensional yeah so that is something you need to balance that studies and work and enjoying and that would help us like remain yeah. motivated and so on thank you arvin thank you so much so i also agree with all the points that you shared yeah while traveling to uk or while moving to uk you have so many dreams and aspirations but when you come here you just try to do your course work or your part time job and that's it i did most of that <laughs> and i i never traveled much but now when i look back it was all easy the the whole journey goes on smoothly but i was taking a lot of pressure but that's not required you can enjoy the whole process eventually so arvind we have come to the last question and one of the most important question is do you enjoy what you do so and also would you suggest pharmacy to be a career choice to our viewers uh, so yeah firstly i really enjoy what i'm doing at the moment and the company which i got into is a really uh, good company and the team and the manager and so on are really supportive Yes. So one thing you can uh, guarantee here is that uh, the team that you are part of will be uh, really supportive and during the onboarding as well they'll really make sure that you are completely aware of what you're supposed to do and mm-hmm. only then will they give you a lot of work according to how we perform yeah so you can be sure that uh, they would be uh, really supportive uh, and uh, regarding the second question whether pharmacy is a a uh, good career choice it indeed is a really a uh, good career choice because pharmacy is one of the positions which is in shortage in the uk so it is a really high demand job and which is really well paid as well mm-hmm. and 
so while selecting the courses following your undergraduate if you have done like pharmacy in your undergraduate and you plan to work as a pharmacist in the uk mm. uh, you need to select the courses that suit the pharmacy profile so yeah pharmacy is a really good choice if you are really interested in pharmacy and working as a pharmacist or a clinical pharmacist yes so i also agree with it and i am personally biased saying that pharmacy is a great career choice thank you so much arvin for being part of the spill the beans uh, right now episode and it was wonderful having you in this episode i'm sure all the viewers might have found it really interesting and also very informative and you have covered a lot of topics in this episode it was really great to have you thank you raki thank you so much for inviting me to your uh, channel again uh, it was really a pleasure to sh- share all this information with everyone in your channel uh, so if our viewers have some more questions and if they want to connect with you how can they do that uh, you can uh, share my linkedin profile that i'll give you so you can share my linkedin profile and the viewers can connect with me through that lovely i will do that and uh, for our viewers i'll be sharing our vin's linkedin handle in the descriptions below and uh, you can connect with him you can ask him more questions and he is an absolute sweetheart and you can ask him any questions and it's going to be a real pleasure to be connected with so thank you so much arvin so i hope this episode was really useful for you so let's meet in another episode with another interesting person to spill some more beans till then ciao